Hey, Drew here, and I'm going to do a review that no one asked for of a series that also no one asked for, uh, but I'm going to do the review anyways. Um, so obviously I'm here to talk about the new Showtime series, uh, Let the Right One In, starring Demian uh, Bashir. The main reason I was interested in it, obviously I followed his career a long time, um, and I was interested in seeing uh, his performance in this series. Um, he plays a father who has a daughter who has uh, been turned into a vampire, and she appears to be 12, but we really don't know how old she actually is. Um, clearly, she's probably much, much older, but um, whatever the case, it seems that her maturity has been stunted uh, by her condition. And you know, the main drama in this story comes from the struggles of a father um, as he tries both to protect his daughter and to save her and to also just kind of allow her to have something resembling a normal childhood. And I think uh, it's, it's a relatable struggle even though none of us can relate to having children that are vampires, as far as I know. Um, and I was not disappointed by, Demian, by Damien Bashir's performance. He did a wonderful, wonderful job. He um, really captured a lot of emotional depth with his performance. I read a number of reviews of this series before I started watching, and the criticism I kept seeing getting lobbied at it was that it was unnecessary, which is kind of a funny criticism to give anything when you think about it, because is any TV series or movie truly speaking necessary? Uh, but from the perspective of as a remake of something that has been done as a novel, as a Swedish film, and as an American film directed by Matt Reeves, which is probably where most Americans have seen this story before, if they've seen it or heard it before. Um, you know, as something that's a, a story that's been told before, I think that critics feel that you have to have a justification for retelling the same tale. And to a certain extent, this series doesn't have the greatest justification for that, in my opinion. Like, why this story is a relevant question. Why this story again? Why tell it with these actors when it's already been told? Uh, but to a certain extent, I would say it is the, the emotional depth of the performances that really makes it worth engaging with. Um, I think, you know, as I said, Damien Bashir is quite excellent. Um, I think that the performance actually of the actress playing Eleanor, his 12-year-old daughter, is very, very good as well. Uh, I don't see a lot of great child actors out there, uh, but she really does a terrific job. And so does the young actor playing the neighbor boy who she slowly befriends, um, Isaiah. He's kind of an outcast, and the reasons for him being an outcast have been significantly altered from the other uh, versions of this story. In this story, he's a much more lovable uh, character than he has been in the past, which kind of really alters some of the story dynamics. Um, I don't remember being as worried that uh, Eleanor would take to him uh, for a food source in previous versions of the story. I never really felt that concerned for his character uh, in those versions because he was somewhat of a sociopath. But here he is just, you know, your typical outcast character, um, which, is a, which is a trend across the board. I think that they've taken a lot of things that were unique and startling in the original series and traded them out for things that are a lot more generic, a lot more um, broadcast friendly if you will. Uh, but at the same time, I think that while this series definitely has its flaws, I think another criticism I, I agree with is that the integration of the horror elements is not uh, the best. Um, of course, you have to have these plot lines uh, to pad the runtime of a 10 episode series with hour long episodes. Of course you do. Um, but in a well done series, they're going to see more uh, central to the overall story than they do here, I feel. I think that 
the human drama oftentimes just feels like its own thing and then the horror elements feel like they kind of belong in a different show. Um, they're not actually particularly scary. There's a lot of gore in this, but overall, like my wife is extremely squeamish and I wouldn't you know, hesitate to watch this with her in the room. So that kind of tells you that it's not, it's not the most frightening or horrific series, um, at least in this initial episode that Showtime has released. Um, but getting back to the integration of the horror elements, like I feel like a lot of the time this just feels like another New York drama, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. A lot of people like New York dramas, but in something advertised as a vampire show, you kind of expect there to be more horror than there is. Um, there are some tense moments, um, some uh, intriguing moments. The score really adds to the sense of tension in some scenes, uh, but so far the vampires have been a little underwhelming, as have the side plots. Um, clearly, there's one plot line that is going to tie in to uh, Damien Bashir's quest to cure his daughter. It's this uh, plot line involving Grace Gummer's character and Nick Stahl. And uh, seemingly, you know, it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna involve his quest for a cure. But the problem with this storyline, and I think this is the general problem with quests for a cure in vampire stories, is that you know that if they were ever to find a cure, the story would be over because the main character would no longer have that immediate conflict of how do I protect my child? How do I find blood for her to feed on? Um, so it can't actually happen, so that dilutes a lot of the tension from that plot line. This plot line, it leads to a moment in the, in the opening um, of the series, which where I almost turned it off because it was so, ins I felt insulted in my intelligence. And if you're sensitive to spoilers, just skip ahead a minute or two, but the setup is that there's this, a uh, character walking outside in the snow and he's there with his father and his father is telling him No need to be scared son This is gonna work Now turn around You're about to miss your first sunrise in years Can you realize this character is probably a vampire and he's afraid of the sun because as we all know if you've studied your vampire lore it, with the exception of Twilight vampires burn up in the sun. Um, it's kind of a big deal. So he's trudging out in the snow and instead of doing what any reasonable person would do when you're testing a cure, um, he walks it way out so that if he gets caught out in the sun, he's doomed to probably die or possibly just get really badly burned. Um, and of course, I'm like, without giving away exactly what happens, it's more or less what you probably expect would happen in this situation. And it was really frustrating to me that two seemingly rational characters would act this way in the premiere of a series and that we're just supposed to believe that, that they wouldn't test it out at all, that they would just do it this way. And when characters act like that and when they don't think things through and when they're not acting logically and when they're doing things just for the sake of a plot contrivance, it really irks me. And I'm afraid that there's a fair bit of that in this series. There's another plot line involving uh, this drug that temporarily turns people in, it gives them vampire-like powers. Um, and again, this plot line, uh, it's a little bit more interesting to me, but it's also kind of like, okay, but what are we doing here? Um, how does this really tie into the immediacy of the protecting the daughter storyline? Um, but that, that, that plot line does lead to one of the more um, interesting and um, brutal, if not entirely unexpected moments of this pilot episode where it's really, really demonstrated that uh, Damien Bashir will do anything to protect his daughter. Um, and, you know, that makes it intriguing. Uh, He's not the most likable character per se, but he is an interesting character with interesting struggles. Um, there's other great performances in this episode. Anika, Noni Rose, uh, Kevin Carroll, uh, Otto Essendo. Um, and overall, the show is just terrifically acted. Um, it does have a problem with dialogue. There's a lot of exposition 
slipped in in clunky ways into casual conversations where characters say things and it's just not the way that people talk, bringing up things that they would already know and that the other characters around them would already know, talking about things that happened in the past um, unnecessarily. Um, so to me, like the writing isn't the best, the execution of the horror elements is so-so, uh, but it's really the performances and um, the immediacy of the concept that pulled me in. I really enjoyed this more than I expected to. I would give it a seven. So those are just my thoughts for what they're worth. Um, if you're interested in seeing my upcoming reviews of this show and other shows, please consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.